play selection this year, nearly 58% running the football. Yeah, by far the most in the XFL. Keith Ford lowers his head and gets more yards after contact. Mohamed Cisse and he collided head-to-head, -head, it looked like. Let's take another look here. It's head-to-shoulder pad, so this run is legal, and Cisse is still down. Wow. I mean, some serious power there. Ford was a five-star recruit who originally signed with Oklahoma before transferring to Texas A&M. He rolls in here about 220 pounds, 5'10", and that was a physical run, and Cisse bearing the brunt of that. Played his college football at Nebraska. He had a season-high five tackles against the Vipers in their Week 2 win. He's an undrafted player that went to the Detroit Lions in 2014, traded to Seattle in 2015. Let's take another look at this play. You see Ford lowers his helmet. He hits him in the shoulder, so it's a legal play. Oh, he may have gotten kicked in the head there yeah, after bit. he was already down. I think it, it was kind of a combination yeah. of both. And let's hope that Mohamed Cisse is okay. You can see the concern on both sidelines. We'll take a quick break right here with 12.39 left to go here in the first half. Well, wisely, the medical personnel taking their time to get Mohamed Cisse off the uh, field. They brought out the stretcher and the cart. They also took his face mask off. Yeah. And you can see the players there on the Seattle sideline up close. Same thing over with the St. Louis players. Everybody concerned about the uh, health of Cisse. The good news is we have seen him moving around down there while the doctors have been treating him. Yeah, let's let's all, you know, hope and pray that this is all precautionary. It, it certainly seems as if it is mostly precautionary because not even just small movements. Cisse looked like he had full control of his legs and was moving his arms as well. So uh, rightly so, the medical staff and doctors here are taking their time and making sure that they are providing Cisse with the highest level of care and attention. And this is you know, the last thing any of us want to see on a football field, certainly. And You know, the interesting thing is you see this, and obviously no one ever, ever, ever wants to see anyone injured. But to see the concern of all the players, it does show you just how quickly these teams have been able to come together and kind of care about one another. Because you go back six weeks ago, these teams didn't even yeah. exist. Well, not, not only just... The Seattle players who are all coming together there around Cisse, but also the St. Louis players. And, and Brock, we've felt that around the league, this this sense of togetherness that all these guys feel in the XFL in general, not just in each of the, the cities, as you see some yeah. of these teammates praying over him right now. You know, these all all these guys are in the same boat. They're out here because they love the game. They're they're trying to get a second chance, and and you see the concern on everyone's face. And you yeah. see the thumbs up from Cisse as he gets taken out, Brock. Yeah, you know, it, it struck I think all of us week one with June Jones in Houston. If you remember sitting with him saying that they and the crowd cheering for Mohamed Cisse, that is a great moment. But you remember June Jones saying they gathered as a team, and he wanted to make sure in team meetings everybody knew their teammate's story. And I found it striking yesterday with Jonathan Hayes saying the same thing because so many of these guys' stories are unique. They've played everywhere. It has not been the easy road they have been coming.